Parkrun will not be reinstating the stats and there are some very big changes on the way. Some months ago, we reported on the removal of the stats pages on the Park Run website. If you're not up to speed with that, you can watch the video I made about it right here. Essentially, all the fastest time and age group records for individual Park Runs and Park Run globally have been removed. And you can see all the other things that have been removed listed here right now, scrolling on the screen. Parker and argue that these records displayed so prominently on their website is a barrier to participation for some. Now, personally, I think it's a shame. I wish they hadn't done it, but some people are absolutely furious. Must suppress rage. Soon after the announcement from Parkrun, a petition was set up demanding that the stats be reinstated. And to this date, it's been signed by some 26,000 people, which I have to say, I think is pretty impressive. By the way, we are still campaigning to get Jasmine Paris on the shortlist for the Sports Personality of the Year. If you haven't signed that petition, then I've linked it in the description below. Please go and sign that. Uh, we do love a petition here. Anyway, I have tried my best to get an interview with Russ Jeffries, the CEO of Parkrun, but essentially all my emails and messages have been ignored. Loser! However, last Saturday, the 27th of April, the Bring Back the Stats Committee, yes, there really is a committee on it, were able to meet in person with Russ Jeffries, CEO of Parkrun, and Paul Sinton Hewitt, the original founder of Parkrun, to discuss the issue. All the information shared in this video is taken directly from the minutes of that meeting. And it's not great news for anyone hoping that Parkrun HQ might be about to do a U-turn. In fact, there were some very strong words from both Paul and Russ on the subject of who makes the decisions at Parkrun. First off, Russ stated unequivocally that the Parkrun stats will not be returning. They will not be reinstated under any circumstances and Parkrun HQ is comfortable with that decision. Paul went on that we are not a community-led organization and that we make our decisions from the top down. His analogy for this was to say that this is our playground. We made it, we set the rules for it. If you don't like it, perhaps you should go play somewhere else. I mean, that's basically Parkrun just sticking two fingers up at everyone who signed the petition and anyone who's in any way upset at the direction Parkrun's taking. In fact, on that, Russ states that removing the stats aligns with Parkrun's charity goals, but also that catering predominantly to their existing community is not their priority. And it gets better. Uh, Paul states, for every disgruntled participant, whether they're a runner, walker or run director, if they leave Park Run, there will be another 100 runners to take their place. I mean, look, I wish the stats hadn't gone, I really do, but at the end of the day, it's only running and I'm not really that bothered. But that, coming from the two most senior members of Park Run HQ, is astonishing. Like any business, Parkrun is about growth and essentially about money. We've argued long and hard on this channel about UTMB and their drive for global expansion, with many people saying that they don't care about runners or the sport. They simply care about the growth of the business, whilst kind of pretending it's about the runners. And it seems to me that exactly the same is happening here with Parkrun. So, after refusing to reinstate the stats and then essentially telling us that they can just do what they like and they don't give a toss about the community that built Parkrun, the meeting moved on to talk about the future five-year plan for Parkrun. But before we do that, if you are finding the video useful or interesting, then please do consider subscribing to the channel. We are now on 25,000 subscribers and the drive is on to try and hit 30,000 before the end of the year, so it'd be great if you could help us with that. I joked in my last video on the subject that perhaps Parkrun should just remove all stats. No timings, no gender, no age categories. Well, perhaps I shouldn't have been so flippant. Paul Sinton Hewitt stated that providing a time is not actually central to Parkrun's mission. They could remove the timing at any point if they wanted to. That's not part 
of Parkrun's five-year mission. However, there is a plan to transform the results page into simply a list, removing gender and age, just a list of names and times. And Paul suggested that this would certainly help to address, as he called it, the gender thing. One of the most interesting plans is to make the Parkrun website more like a social hub like Facebook or Strava where you have to be logged in and you can make your profile private and people can only see your results if they are your friend. Best friends forever and ever. Oh friend. I have to say I quite like this idea. It completely changes the way we currently use the Parkrun website but Parkrun state they want to get away from being a race or even being seen as a sport. I imagine that it won't be long before your Parkrun time is no longer ported over to Power of 10. They want to completely get away from that altogether. However, one nugget of hope for the stats geeks is that Parkrun state they may approve a third party app to provide some of the stats that have been removed from the website. Now, this would, of course, be user opt in only, but I guess it's something. Russ Jeffries also agreed to commit to better communication from Parkrun HQ. One of the big complaints about the changes that Parkrun bring in is that they often happen without warning and just appear all of a sudden. Russ committed to saying that he will try and be better at communicating future changes from Parkrun HQ. But Parkrun is changing and people don't like change. For people who see Parkrun as a race or a chance to beat their 5k PB or an important first step on a runner's journey or a feeder event for running clubs, Parkrun's five-year plan for expansion and inclusivity doesn't include you and they don't care. I have always supported Parkrun and for now I will continue to do so. I am interested to see where these changes take us over the next five years. I am prepared to say a sad goodbye to the old Parkrun and I'll try to be open-minded enough to welcome in whatever the new Parkrun is. In my time as a runner, I've only ever done two official 5K races and that's because Parkrun has always filled that gap. My guess is over the next five to 10 years, 5K event race directors may be getting a bit more of my money. What are your thoughts on this? Let me know in the comments below. The full text of the meeting between Russ and Paul and the Bring Back the Stats committee is linked in the description below. If you've enjoyed this video, please do hit the like button, consider subscribing to the channel, and I will see you guys on the start line next time.